imagine facing a data set having multiple categorical variables, okay? Not just one, two, three, but having really the majority of your variables being categorical variables. Um, in this talk, I want to I wanna address how you can model all the dependencies between all these variables using Bayesian networks and how you can really uh, leverage the maximum information you can get from these categorical variables. So uh, we're going to start off with uh, the problem. Uh, I'll present what we do at AppsFlyer, which is uh, finding fraudulent installs, trying to calculate essentially what's the probability for a certain install to be fraud. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about why is that even a problem, why is that even difficult, what's the challenge in doing that, and then I'm going to talk about the solution that we used was uh, using a Bayesian network to find these probabilities and calculate them correctly and efficiently. Uh, I'm going to talk about how we actually build these networks. Okay, um, so how we take our ba our data, we build a graphical uh, representation of, of a Bayesian network from it, and how afterwards we use our Bayesian network to actually calculate the probabilities and uh, really find fraud eventually. Um, I'm also going to touch on why some other popular models fail to do just that, uh, like neural networks or um, decision trees, which is what might what you might want to try doing, and you'll find out that it's not working as well as you expected. Okay, so uh, we'll start off from the problem. So AppsFlyer sees about a hundred million application installs every day. Okay, we get these application installs. And then we want to uh, attribute these application installs to add clicks. Okay, we get application installs, we get add clicks. We want to attribute them to each other. Okay, now applications pay a lot of money to publishers for their attributions. AppsFlyer is actually kind of a neutral third party in this uh, scenario where we judge between the app and the publisher how much money they owe them according to how many attributions we say that they got from this publisher. So we need to figure out the correct number of uh, attributions. That's, that's our business, really. Um, now, um, there are some fraudsters out there. So fraudsters, essentially what they're going to try to do, for the sake of this talk anyway, is uh, kind of bring users or, or bring attributions without real users behind them, B bring sort of fake installs with just some bot or script behind them and not a real user. And so they hope to gain the money from the attribution without really, uh, well, having to go through the trouble of bringing real users. Um, so essentially our goal is going to be, let's try to calculate what's the probability for an install to be fraud. Okay, given an install, how likely is that install to actually be fraud? So, uh, why is that even difficult? So assume, for, uh, for example, that we have 20 different parameters. Okay, Take parameters like the country or the language of the device from which the install came. Uh, then there are many countries in the world, more than 100, uh, many languages, and many all sorts of technical parameters about the device that tend to be categorical variables and also tend to have a lot of possible values. So uh, the number of combinations that we're going to get from all these different variables is going to be uh, something like 100 to the 20 in this example, which is 10 to the 40. So my point is it's going to be a big number dealing with all these combinations. So we can't really uh, expect to find all these combinations within our existing data. We can't model every such combination individually. Uh, and we also can't deal with it from a computational perspective or from uh, either from runtime or, or memory complexity uh, is just too high of a number. So we have a, a couple of problems. So um, one common approach for dealing with this is the naive base approach. Okay, And the naive base, essentially what it does is says, OK, let's just assume all these 20 parameters, they're all independent. They have nothing to do with each other. right? And then we, we're going to calculate and, and learn sort of the probability for every uh, every one of these 20 parameters, every one of their 100 possible values, learn it separately, right? So we're going to get 100 options for the first variable, another 100 for the next one, et cetera, et cetera. 
so we'll get 100 times 20 or 2,000 options to learn. That's very easy uh, to learn. It's uh, an easy computation to make. Um, the only problem with this approach is that it's essentially wrong. It's, it, it, we've assumed that all variables are independent, but they're not. Okay? If you consider, for instance, an install coming from Russia, uh, then the language of this install is very likely Russian. It's much less likely to be Chinese. Okay, so clearly <laughs> there's a very strong dependence between these parameters. We cannot assume that they're all independent. Uh, then uh, if we were to assume that, we wouldn't just get the right probability. So uh, it's just the wrong assumption to make. We don't want to make this assumption. Um, so, uh, so we don't want to do that. What can we do instead? Um, Bayesian networks, okay. So, um, so essentially what a Bayesian network does is sort of calculate which of these variables are codependent and which ones are not, okay. Um, so we want to study uh, if for every two variables, if they're dependent, essentially we're going to have an edge between them in the network. And if they're not, then we're not going to have, have an edge between them. We'll see that in a minute. Um, and then using that network, we're going to be able to still compute uh, the install probability while not, uh, you know, engaging in, in too complex computations. So it's going to yield, hopefully, the correct probability with a reasonable computation to make. That's what we're aiming for. Um, let's see how we build such a Bayesian network. Okay, so in this example, I have four variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. I came out, uh, I came out with the names myself. Okay, um, so uh, in our example, let's start with a full network. Okay, so we assume all these variables in the beginning. A full network actually represents all the dependencies. We have all the edges from x1 to x2 to x3 to x4, from x2 to x3 to x4, and from x3 to x4. So we assume all these variables are, are dependent in the beginning, and we're going to remove edges later on as we uh, check for independencies. But uh, for starters, the probability for seeing a specific value of x1, x2, x3, and x4 combined uh, is uh, just by applying Bayes' theorem a couple of times, you get the formula here. So it's probability for seeing x4 given x1, x2, x3 times the probability for seeing x3 given x1, x2 times probability for seeing x1, x2 given x1 times probability for seeing x1. Okay, so uh, that's going to be uh, our formula to begin with. And, and essentially, our network here is just a re graphical representation of this same formula right here. Okay, um, and then we're going to start off removing edges. Okay, so now let's say that the probability for seeing x2 given x1 is roughly the same as just seeing x2. In other words, x1 and x2 are independent. Okay, then we can remove the edge from x1 to x2. And then uh, if right now for x2 we're going to have a memory of something like 100 square, right? If there's 100 values for x1, 100 possible values for x2, then for every combination of them we're going to have to store uh, what's the probability for this combination in, in memory, then now uh, this is going to be reduced to just 100. Um, so, uh, so we've removed this edge, we've reduced the complexity for, for node x2, um, and uh, now our, our network just became a, a little simpler. We're going to continue doing this again. Uh, in this case, assume that uh, probability for seeing x4 given x1, x2, and x3 is roughly the same as probability for seeing x4 given x2 and x3. Okay, or in other words, given x2 and x3, x1 doesn't add any information about x4. Or given x2 and x3, x1 and x4 are independent. In this case, we'll remove the edge from x1 to x4, and uh, the memory of x4 will thus uh, be reduced from 100 to the 4 to 100 cubed. Um, by the way, to sort of uh, test the dependency or independency, we used uh, chi-square test, okay, statistical test uh, for dependency testing. Uh, maybe some variation over it for uh, conditional dependence here, uh, but that's basically it. Uh, and uh, let's continue with the example and assume that now probability for seeing x4 given x2 and x3 is roughly the same as seeing uh, x4 given only x2. That x3 doesn't really add any information, then we'll remove the edge from x3 to x4, and uh, we'll reduce the memory of x4 thirder, further now to 100 square. Um, so, okay, so this is our final uh, Bayesian network, say that all these dependencies are, are real dependencies, okay? Uh, so uh, we only have these edges left, 
And now our calculation, uh, as stems from this new Bayesian network that we've created, is as the formula above said, probability for seeing x1, x2, x3, and x4 combined is the probability for seeing x1 times the probability for seeing x2 times the probability for seeing x3 given x1, x2 times probability for seeing x4 given x2. Okay. Uh, so uh, now we are able to calculate the probability for seeing this combination with uh, an accurate, a, a relatively accurate uh, calculation and yet uh, a, a rather quick or rather practical computation that we can actually make in practice. Good. Uh, another nice bonus that we get out of it is explainability. So assume uh, in this example that probability for x1 is 0 0.6, for x2 is 0 0.5, for x3 given x1 and x2 is 0 0.3, and for probability for seeing x4 given x2 is 0 0.0002. Okay, then in this example, I'm going to argue that uh, this combination of x4 and x2 is really the combination that makes this uh, specific install fraud, is the, really the fraud reason. So this is going to be our explainability. Now, you might think, come on, Ares, this is a silly example. This number 0.0002 is so much smaller than the other numbers. Why would you even give such a silly example? The reason I am giving this example is because it actually is a fairly typical example from our data. Okay, if you consider X2 being uh, the device's country, say Russia, and then X4 being the language Chinese, then the probability for seeing Chinese, given that a device's country is Russia, is actually going to be very low, probably even lower than this number here. Uh, so this is actually a fairly typical fraud example. We're going to usually see one or two values that stand out from the crowd and, and really stand out as the fraud reason. So we're going to get explainability rather easily from our Bayesian network. Okay, um, now, uh, so a few words about why other popular models like neural networks or decision trees don't work as well. So essentially the problem is that categorical variables are not continuous. They're quite the opposite of it. Okay, in our example, if I were to keep all the values of all parameters just the same and just change this language from Russian to Chinese, and I've just turned this install from very unlikely to be fraud to very likely to being fraud. So I've just changed our output, the probability of fraud, uh, very dramatically with just uh, changing one parameter's value. So uh, this small change in input yields a very large output shift. So this is a very uncontinuous behavior. And thus, uh, trying, uh, say, if I try neural network, then uh, it will try to calculate the gradient descent over the loss function of it, right? Uh, if, if it's not continuous, the loss function is not continuous, then really I'm, I'm pretty much going to get uh, nonsense looking for uh, the minimum of this function. Um, if I try to do uh, whatever, if I try to use decision trees, um, then usually they will look for uh, the most improving feature locally, right? Um, but if I need a combination of features, they might not even, uh, you know, check these, this combination of features if every one of these features individually won't contribute, right? If the language itself or the country itself isn't uh, well enough correlated with fraud, then the tree would just not choose to use them in the first place. Um, any one of them, and then it would never get to use the combination of them and, and get the benefits of it. This is uh, especially true if we have combinations of, of more than two features, even three or four, uh, which uh, we might have sometimes. and, and um, it's very hard for decision trees to actually find this. Okay, um, so uh, to conclude, um, using a Bayesian network, we were able to uh, reach an accurate probability calculation that is computable in practice. Uh, we also got explainability as a nice bonus, and it's also something that's uh, just like the explainability actually provides. It's easy to understand, to debug, to improve this, uh, so it's something very easy to work with for us as data scientists along the development process rather than a black box like a, a neural network. Um, and in practice, in AppsFlyer, it's today responsible for about 40% of AppsFlyer's detected uh, fraudulent install. And um, precision that we have is over 99%, although uh, most of our data uh, is not fraud, actually. The data set is unbalanced, and yet we manage that when we say something is fraud, we have to be right. That's uh, important for our business and, and it's something that we only manage to do using uh, a Bayesian network. So uh, that's it. Thank you.